Whoa. Majora's Mask. In South Clock Town. So here we have a little introduction to Clock Town itself. Pretty much everyone you see is a repeated model from Ocarina of Time. But um, they're all active throughout this uh, little set of days. Yeah, 70, uh, 72 hours in, in clock. We'll get to that. Um, you're going to see characters moving around, going about their business. Compared to Ocarina of Time, where like everyone you saw was just kind of situated in one spot, bouncing up and down, um, the world of Majora's Mask feels alive. It feels inhabited by people who have things to do. Also, there's this Deku Scrub who does not want me to use his flower. <laughs> you know... Fucking dog. Okay, dog, that's cool. I just realized there's a flower on top of concrete. Uh, where, how, did, how does it grow? <laughs> how did it grow? So Toddle suggested that I look for the Great Fairy. She lives in that cave right there. And there's this little cutscene every time I go to a new part of Clock Town. That dude right there is Tingle. You all know who Tingle is. We'll get to him. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> He's really popular in Japan, though. Apparently. But not so much here. Don't know what that says about Japan. He's a 35-year-old man dressing like a fairy. <laughs> I love how they even give him an age. Yeah, he's 35. This is the only guy. 35. So he's basically the guy we buy maps from. There are five locations in the overworld. Clock Town, Southern Swamp, Great Bay, Snowhead, and Stone Tower. So every time we go to one of those locations, we can find Tingle and buy a map from him, depending on where he is. One map, like, he'll have one map for where he is that's relatively cheap, and then a map for, like, the next location you would go to for relatively expensive price. But, like, if you want to get it early, you can get it from in there. Also, because we're, we're a uh, deck of scrub child, we cannot leave Clock Town. Yet. However... There is one place where that's not quite the case, and we'll get there in a bit. But first, Great Fairy. I'm, I'm basically just hyping up this entire thing as, wait for the good stuff. Oh, and the Great Fairy's... fairies. <laughs> Who would have thought? So yeah, Skull Kid's entire point of existence is just to fuck over everyone. I like to imagine all of them were saying that at the same exact time, and it was just like it's bothering him. <laughs> Please, gotta get to my Oh god, I have to get out of here! Everyone is slightly delayed from one before him. I know, right? I don't get I want to play a minigame, so I'm gonna do that first. <laughs> Please save me! Okay, but I want to go down this hole first. <laughs> it looks fun. This is a game for Deku Scrubs. We talked to this guy, paid 20 rupees, I think? 10 or 20 rupees. 10 rupees. And I hop into that flower, and then I have to fly over to those little platforms, grab the rupees on them, and if I collect all of them, I get uh, 50 rupees. And it's a decently challenging game. This one's not too hard because the platforms stay in one, like, one, um, X axis, they just move up and down the Y axis. Later on, they start moving around the X axis, and that's when it gets difficult. Also, fucking oh. shit. <laughs> and things like that can happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that correctly. I want 50 rupees. It's <laughs> a good deal, give 10, get 50 back. So I say it's not too hard, but some weird things can happen. Um, a little insight into my setup. Uh, I'm recording this from the virtual console through a um, 
capture card, and when I activate the capture card sometimes, that will put a little bit of a delay between what I do and what shows up on the screen. It's pretty effective overall for, like, um, a low-res game like Majora's Mask. For games like Nino Kuni, that's when it becomes a real problem, but even in cases like Majora's Mask, that little bit of delay can be the X factor between landing on the rupee or landing on the ground. So the, the only real trick to this is jump out of it at the height of the jump, and then uh, you just should be able to make it. It's not really that impressive. It's only 15 second, 15 second difference. Yeah. They're impressed every time you do it. <laughs> Pizza Joe. Yeah, strange name for a deep. Yes, for a deep. It's a strange name for everyone. <laughs> I don't know. We had Pecos Menor the other day, and he was pretty cool. But <laughs> Pizza Joe, are you crazy? Let's see what the next thing is I'm gonna do. I think I'm just going to get the um, missing piece of the Great Fairy. Of course, I need to show this place off. That little guy swiping his hands around is gonna be one of the most important men we know. <laughs> oh, and the postman. Yeah. So he stops to disrupt his schedule. Huh? I know, right? I really love this town theme because uh, I, I don't. It, I just it takes me back to when I was a kid. Because one time me and my brother were playing it, and my dad was recording a phone message for the voicemail, and like the little clock town theme would be playing. And so every from then on forth, every time somebody would make a call, we'd miss. You just hear do 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 do, and then my dad in Spanish, I guess the casa no hay nadie, you know. I don't know. I just thought it was memorable to me. <laughs> just do 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 do, do Spanish do 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 do. do. <laughs> Ooh. So yeah, this guy is the bank. I deposit rupees to him, and uh, there are two things I can get from him, depending on how much I deposit. We're not going to worry about the second one, because that's literally not until the end of the game. But what I can get during this first cycle is the adult's wallet that lets me hold 200 rupees. And that, like, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to get that in this first part of the game. And if you do, it's remarkably useful. Just to have that much. Yeah, Pizza Joe, I'll never forget your deposits. I wonder why. So that's a fairy, and she's on water. So, um, Deku Link can't swim, but what he can do is hop on water. That's a cute little picture. Yeah. So just showing that off a little bit. Um, if I spin before I hit the water, I will jump a little farther because I've got more momentum. If I land in the water before I can get to solid ground, Link just... Like, he drowns, but then he just shows up where he was, and then he's fine. Like, you, you don't lose any health at all. Also, the postman is ridiculously fast. <laughs> He's <laughs> just spinning around like a doofus. <laughs> How much does it take to throw up? I, I, I'm gonna go in the cave. Please don't get near me. Ready ears. <laughs> you know, even when I was a kid, I was like, is this really E to E? Rated E? Because that's not E. That's something. I don't know what it is, but it's not a. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not ugly, but it's not pretty. I was always most weirded out by your laugh. <laughs> oh, oh, what's up? Uh... <laughs> oh, my stomach! Praise Jesus! <laughs> 
I pray, I pray to the wood gods. I pray to the hat clipping through ground gods. <laughs> I'm fishing, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I have magic, I can now use my first um, projectile attack. And I'm going to use it immediately outside. There's a balloon floating around. And I just feel like popping it. <laughs> Interesting thing to note about the Great Fairy was that they actually originally had animations for every time Link would learn a special thing. Yeah. But they just took them out for no reason. She would, like, take the character's hands and stuff and, like, show them exactly how to do it. They just ended up not using them. So, um, this kid does not have a face. <laughs> I'm currently eating it. <laughs> and he punched me, thanks. I got stuck in your hole! <laughs> this is just one kid. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, are you new? Alright, so what's going on? We're playing hide and seek with the bombers. They're the local help everybody kids. Their model is based on the kid in the graveyard in the Child Link timeline from Ocarina of Time. And the two of them are hanging out right here. You can find them pretty much in the place where you would see the bombers usually. The caveat is you need to catch them. You can't just... I, I, I see you. I pressed up on the C-stick and I see you. You have to actually catch them. Which isn't too hard when you're deck link because the spin dash is ridiculously fast. Not as fast as the post stuff. So. Yeah. I could swipe his heels if I wanted. <laughs> if I, if I'm feeling like now, I think that's the only cuckoo anywhere. Yeah. Like aside from the farm, there's no cuckoos anywhere. They don't really show up that much, but I think if you hit them hard enough, they still try to kill you. Probably. <laughs> we were just hiding. Oh god. Oh, well, it's time for night. That was special, all right. <laughs> this little area right here, if I hadn't gotten the Great Fairy in the laundry pool, she would be floating around there. And I did not know the kid could fall off the thing like that. I thought he always stayed up. <laughs> I do not want to deposit mail. <laughs> hey, I know you're playing hide and seek, but you want to talk to me? The talking mailbox? No, come back. I want to play too! The reason I'm doing this is once I've caught all of them, they'll give me the code to their hideout, and I need to get in there in order to do a few things. I also like how the carpenters are still carpenters in Majora's Mask. <laughs> the last bomber is up here. In fact, we talked to him earlier. Not you. <laughs> I'm the secret bomber! No, stop. <laughs> bomber man! No. No. <laughs> Not again! <laughs> okay. Oh, if only you weren't you. Well, thanks, racist assholes. <laughs> what do you got against Bark? Well, the Skull Kid was made of it, and he just caused problems. Damn it. Gotta fuck it up for everybody else. So this is the code for the hideout. It changes for every game. So, like, it's not gonna stay that way, but if you know the code for your game before you played it, you could probably just put it right in. You don't even have to worry about that. You can get all sorts of combinations, although I've never actually seen one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Because that would be the dumbest code. At least I got a decent jumble of it. This kid seems really lonely to me. <laughs> I'm always bored, so 
I think I think it's a she actually. That's the only girl, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. You sure? I don't know. I had a player's guide and it would say like, oh, this is a little sister. Little tidbits. Although the player guide could be wrong. I, think. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I think it fell apart. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Whoa! Oh <my. laughs> Another balloon. I really don't think so. <laughs> Shit! My only defense to climb the ladder. Something I could push out of the way. I never really got that. Why is there a random balloon just there? Tattle doesn't trust me to know how to climb a ladder. <laughs> Balloons are evil, man. I got sucked into one. Well, Tattle, you're the size of the marble. Hey, it's a dancing scarecrow. Holy hell. <laughs> Hug me! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. Can I get a hug? No. <laughs> Guess we <what you> forget. <laughs> so like in the is this first cycle? Um if you talk to the scarecrow, there's another one in like the pawn shop out in East Clocktown. Um if you talk to him, you have the option to move ahead to dawn or night of the next day, depending on where you are. I can smell your saliva. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I think this was the first Zelda to have voice clips, like consistently. Yeah, I think Ocarina of Time will have like a couple here and then, but not like. Uh, but here it's definitely is more. Yeah. I see some rupees in that tree. So. We can look around and kind of get an idea of what Termina Field will look like. But what we're really here for, Skull Kid. Which is not, what we're not really here for. We're here for that. The thing tried to kill me with its sadness. <laughs> oh, thanks, asshole. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you sad, Mr. Moon? Oh, look at that. So yeah, if you look around in Termina Field and see these kids just kind of, Hey! That means there's a secret there. Oh, I thought they were doing some kind of secret moon chant to try to stop the moon in some way. <laughs> hey, don't fall! Hey, don't... <laughs> There's a little bird that flies around Clock Town. It's not a danger, and I don't know what it's for. They're called Gways. I always forget that because it's such a non-indicative name. <laughs> you hear it? Oh yeah, those are birds, like keys. Those are bats. Those are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they sound like birds too. <laughs> Well, I guess I sound kind of like Gogo -Go from Nino Kuni. <laughs> so I got the Moon's Tear. I'm surprised I haven't caught fire. I know, right? He just he just dies immediately right there. This is our inventory. Um, in Ocarina of Time, that one right next to like the item inventory would be Link's tunic, shield, sword. Since the swords and everything we get are either related to masks, or just kind of mandatory according to the game. That part has been replaced with the mask menu. We don't have any masks yet because it hasn't really entered into the fold, but it will in the next part. Masks are the glue of Majora's Mask. It's in the title, even. And there's, a, there's some pretty cool symbolism that goes along with it. You can get a lot, like, psychologists and, um... Uh, what's the word? Uh, philosophers can get quite a lot of mileage out of this game. And they have. Just look up any debate or anything about this game. I could talk for hours, probably, if I had the right prompt. I'm pretty sure we all tried to get behind the guard when we had the little ledge to jump off. Yeah. Oh, keep that in mind, though. Okay. 
It'd be something that goes along with that. Oh. <laughs> also, fun fact that the, the sub, uh, when you're switching screens here, it's a lot faster than the Nocarina of Time. Oh, god, yeah. It's like, um, especially in Hyrule Field, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. The N64 just chugged. <laughs> and here's just like, whip, 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 just flips, like nothing. That's even the case for the Virtual Console. They didn't really change, like, update it or fix it or anything. It's mostly a ROM. Hmm. But by giving that guy the Moon's Tier, I get his real estate. <laughs> okay. Hey. Oh? Deku Scrub Economy, I'm not gonna question it. <laughs> we barely know it and we're one of them. But with this, I can get an early heart piece. Fun fact, I could also get that pretty much later without using that uh, flower. <laughs> oh, so, oh, yeah, that is the um, door to the clock tower right there. As you can see, I can't jump up there. I would need to be at least human. No, dog. <laughs> I think you're trying to kill it, actually. Uh, uh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, you're spinning! <laughs> oh yeah, Pizza Joe, I remember you. You're the only guy who donated today. I mean, deposited. We've got extra life on the brain. We're recording this during the Yeah, screen. I'm sorry. If you would like to donate to the Deku Strap Foundation and for dying kids, that would be great. Nick Scrubs on fire donation. <laughs> I was gonna say, okay, that's the worst thing I said all night, but okay. <laughs> Are there any Deku Scrubs in New Jersey? Well, I can ask the guy under the bridge. We have a bridge. I just realized, shit, I can do something before daylight. <laughs> hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> the sun might burn. This is the stockpot in. This will be much more important later on. But I need to get to the bathroom before daybreak. Because this guy. <laughs> there is a man in the toilet. <laughs> Yay! And he has the best voice. Yay! The Legend of Zelda Futures. And it flushes, God. <laughs> so by giving him paper, I get a hard piece. I don't want it. <laughs> well, I do. This is how it transitions to a new day. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's very dramatic. If you're not expecting it, it might scare you, though. Yeah. Like, if we're inside dungeons or anything, it's kind of like how it was um, when it transitioned to nighttime. It's just that little purple bar. It doesn't interrupt, which is nice. There's a woman. I'm not going to worry about this place quite yet. But the characters will be very important later. So, at this point, we're mostly just waiting for midnight of the third day. Yeah, there's nothing, there's not, nothing else much to do, right? For the most part, I'm just trying to think of ways to pass the time. <laughs> I don't want to look at the mailbox. That right there is the shooting gallery, or not the shooting gallery, it's um, Honey and Darling's games thing. If I shoot those targets, rupees drop out. You never get more than three. Why? Because of that. <laughs> it always falls in the basket, doesn't it? Yeah, always. Now, um, remember how you said we always tried to get behind this guy? Yeah. Well, give it a second. And, uh, you do. What? <laughs> so, uh, I'm not supposed to be out here, but, um... I don't know, it's raining and thunderstorming and you're very well unprotected, let's do it. So, um, yeah, this, this is a glitch. It's, you're not supposed to be able to do that. In fact, you can only do that with that guard. You can't do it with any of the others. Um... What happens here 
you basically go out into Terminate Field before it expects you to, so some things aren't loaded, like the uh, music. And um, there aren't any enemies. The gr there's grass there, so like you can farm for money if you want. But there's not a lot out there, it's mostly a fun curiosity. So, uh, that woman's being very bleak. <laughs> Get happy. <laughs> Stop being sad in the rain! <laughs> Jesus! There's these ladies. Fucking fine. Jeez. He's gonna appreciate your dancing. <laughs> You'll appreciate me, right? Your little I'm hanging on a banana hook dancing. <laughs> but I have now got enough in the bank to get the adult's wallet. It's kind of- this is kind of like my priority in the first cycle. Notice I said cycle. You'll see why. I'm just hyping you all up for everything now, aren't I? <laughs> this glass bottle, holy shit, you guys, later on. This, this guard's kind of weird, like... I can't go in through that side, even though it looks kind of like I can, like I rev up. But this side, I squeeze right by. It kind of slingshots back to the side. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, God! <laughs> you broke me! So since there's no enemies or anything out here, it makes for some nice, like, free rupee farming locations. But I got a little curious, since I know this is a glitch and it's not supposed to work like this. If I were to find any of the holes and go into there, would something happen? Like with the game freeze or anything. So I'm up here where there is a hole with, or they're called grottos. Where like I can hop in and just do something. So um, I'm going to test this. Um, nope, it's fine. In fact, remember this grotto. There is a heart piece involved with this, but we can't get until after Woodfall. <laughs> well, you can get some bugs. <laughs> and nope, it's still fine. In fact, there's still no enemies out here. Is it me? Or does his nose get bigger? Is it the angle? Uh, it's probably the angle. The moon does get bigger, though. If you watch it, you can see it slowly moving down in the skybox. And if you um, get the camera just right and sit there, you can see it slowly getting bigger. It works better, like, since um, my capture card is basically recording this progressive scan, so it's nice and clear. You can see the jagged edges as they move. Oh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, and since this is the third day and the tower has gotten a little bigger, I can use this. Oh, God, I hear the dog. You can use this to get up there, and there is a chest there. This shows up every third day. There's 50 rupees in there, so no reason not to grab it. And for that guy to walk right through me. <laughs> Thank God you're short. That wood would have killed you. <laughs> Hi, Plank. <laughs> Interesting thing enough, the moon originally didn't have a face. It was just a moon. And they gave it a face that horrified everybody. <laughs> yeah, I can't decide if it's more scary or not. <laughs> it's unnerving. Like, um... Basically just... Well, the thing is, um... There's this theory that the moon is kind of like... It almost has a conscience. So, like... The reason we got a moon's tear is because it's crying. It's terrified that it is being forced down onto the world itself. And the face is just something called being painted on. Of sort. Not like actually painted on, but you know. What I mean. Yeah, it like it's not. People think it's a smile. It's clearly not a smile. It's a expression of pain. This is some quite useful information. I make use of what this guy is talking about 
almost as much as anything else. Uh, okay, thank you. Also, this little area right here makes for some nice uh, rupee farming. If you just want a quick place with 10 rupees, those pots are nice. But um, the rupees don't respawn if you just leap through here. Even though the jars do, which I don't understand. I had to give you some little kind of limitation. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> I don't want to move. It's my job. Live here. I could talk through my jaw. Oh. <laughs> uh, I could say a whole Sonic with one jaw. Ah. Uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> I'm having a shouting match with the moon. It's not working. So basically, just waiting for midnight. Hope you guys appreciate my new fast-forward image. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. By the way. I think he's more surprised at the fact that there's 12 rubies. <laughs> <laughs> that many! <laughs> I've never seen a number so high! And I had a root quarter! That's rupee. Holy shit! <laughs> this cutscene happens only when you're in uh, South Clocktown. If you're anywhere else, it won't show up. I think it's time to go up there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, you know, you got six minutes. No, I'm not moving. <laughs> now, since this is pretty much the end of our cycle, and I still have rupees, um, I want to put these away. I do not have that many. <laughs> That 12 is a lot to you? Anything over 10 is just incredible to him. <laughs> That's so bad. You're a banker, but you get surprised by money. <laughs> Keeps his job interesting. <laughs> so yeah, if I didn't have this deco flower, I wouldn't be able to move. Then don't stop me! <laughs> Gee, why did you land? You just... Shut up, Tattle. Another thing I really like about this game is, um, unlike some games which try to equate creepy with, like, black and white, Majora's Mask uses color, and lots of it. It's almost saturated, which gives it a, like, a very eye-catching visual style. I wish more games would do that, especially, like, darker ones. I, overall, I especially like the use of purple. Just because I like purple. Blue is my favorite color. No, I've seen it. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, I saw it for three days. See it's up its nose. Stop screaming, God! <laughs> oh God, a nose hair! Huh? <laughs> it's, it's a, well, that's wacky. Okay. <laughs> well, for the end of the world is in five minutes. I'm gonna look at your teeth. So I don't know what to do. Is that my Karina? <laughs> <laughs> that that, that thing was always silly to me. Oh shit, a bubble! Uh, uh, oh, it hurts. Princess Zelda gave me this. <laughs> Time to think about her. As a pile of wood. <laughs> So this flashback is the only appearance of Zelda. Basically, it's the qualifier for it to be part of The Legend of yeah. Zelda. <laughs> right? Just like, yeah, it's called Zelda. At least there's something remotely useful about it in that Zelda reteaches us the Song of Time, 
we used it in a couple places in Ocarina of Time, mostly for some reason to move blocks. But um, in Majora's Mask, it is our time travel device. So we do more time things in Majora's Mask than in Ocarina of Time. I'm curious how that reminds her of us. If you look closely, you can still see the shadows blink in the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> He's still bobbing up and down. You remember the so Link, Link, you can stop. I, I can't hear you. I'm already... Out of it. Yeah, bye, Zelda. <laughs> ah, if only I knew her name. <laughs> oh, bonk! <laughs> Snap my neck, Tattle, thanks. <laughs> How would you know that? Did you get lost in your memories? What? You weren't there. Need more time, do I? <laughs> time to take out the Pizza Joe special. <laughs> 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 Plays a completely different song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it. We'll throw you back. Just stop. Stop. The goddess of time needs your hearing. Yeah, I remember that. Ow! I don't remember that. Because of my head. <laughs> I definitely remember that. <laughs> so welcome the other gimmick of Majora's Mask. Time travel. At any time, we can play the Song of Time and go back to Dawn of the First Day. A lot of the side quests happen at specific points. Like, dungeons and whatever can happen usually at any time. But a lot of the side quests are time-specific. So, um... If you want to get a lot out of it, you need to be very careful with your timing and your planning. It's quite in-depth, and some places it can be a bit maddening. Like, if you need to do something, and then you go back in time, and then you lose your progress. That's why the banker is so useful, because he lets you keep rupees for when you go back. He basically stamps him, uh, the amount on your head, so you're kind of stealing from him. <laughs> but yeah, it's all about time. Oh shit. <laughs> this is one of the few games where the player's guide is actually very useful. It gives you every, like, time slot, every what, what every character does, what time they're gonna be. Very useful. This is what the Happy Mask Salesman does. Thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You got your instrument? Well, look at mine that I've always had! Is it like this delicate piano? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> right with his feet, he just starts playing. <laughs> Get, can't hear you. Sorry there, Pizza Joe, I was just fucking with you. <laughs> 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 That's pretty much what that scene was. Am I wrong? <laughs> So yeah, that was the Song of Healing. We'll use that in a couple places to get more masks. Masks, masks, masks. It's interesting how the Song of Healing here, uh, can, like, forms things into masks. In the old games, it just, you know, put signs back together. Yeah. Well, you're thinking, uh, Zelda's Lullaby. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that one, that one. Because I know the Song of Healing is an Ocarina of Time, but it's barely used. It wasn't an Ocarina of Time, although, backwards, it's Saria's song. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that too. 
And there's something creepy about a guy who knows how to turn souls into masks who sells masks. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we were supposed to get his back. Oh shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> Here's how you boil your mask. Make sure you give it some eyes. I kind of like things like Majora's Mask. The item itself, it's um, shrouded in mystery, and you don't necessarily learn like anything that clears that up for you. It, it's almost entirely speculative. But it makes for interesting conversation. Yeah. Like, you, you really don't get to actually learn much about the mask other than it's super evil and... Well, apparently it killed a lot of people too. And there was a psycho named Majora, that's all you really know. We don't even know if Majora was a thing or not. Right, we don't know if it's a, a beast or an animal or a guy, nobody knows. Well, so do you ever wonder if the Happy Mask Salesman was based visually off Miyamoto. <laughs> I hear he was. He was designed after him or something. He's got that exact same smile. I mean, that would explain the Mario mask on his uh, sack of masks there. Yeah. He's got a lot of weird things on his back. There's one guy <laughs> who looks like Falco. <laughs> I love how he just jump cuts into another <laughs> into another just frame. <laughs> I, did I say I, he has a mask of Elvis, but... Next time, we will go back to the second cycle and do a few things now that we're human.